So guys, we have some absolutely massive breaking news that for the first time in this primary cycle, Bernie Sanders has taken a statistically significant lead in a major national poll. There's been lots of polls showing Joe Biden well ahead of the field. There's been a lot of polls showing a very close Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders two horse race. There's even been some polls recently showing Bernie Sanders narrowly ahead of Joe Biden in a national poll. But this is the first one, guys, from a reputable pollster that shows Bernie Sanders well ahead of Biden and the rest of the field. Let's take a look at the numbers. You see Bernie Sanders at 25%, Biden eight points back at 17, Michael Bloomberg right behind him at 15, Warren at 14, Buttigieg at 10, nobody else is in the double digits. And it's also important to look at the movement and what you can see is that with Sanders up four and Biden down nine, that's a 13 point swing between the two leading candidates, which explains how Bernie Sanders has been able to create a massive lead. It's also important to recognize that Michael Bloomberg has rather surged up the charts and is now within the margin of error of Joe Biden for second place. And no one else has really made significant movement upward or downward in the rest of the field. So these numbers show us a few really important things. First, it shows that Bernie Sanders is undeniably surging because while Bernie has done good in isolated polls in some early state polls, he's led some national polls by small amounts. This is the first time he's opened up such a large lead in the national race, showing that he's never been stronger in terms of how the public have seen him in terms of his ability to win this contest. It's also showing undeniably that as good as Bernie Sanders is doing, Joe Biden is falling even faster. A nine point national decline is a precipitous fall for Joe Biden. And it shows that he's in real trouble. And with him admitting that he's expecting a poor result in New Hampshire, you might see that number fall even faster. It also shows that Michael Bloomberg, despite the fact that he hasn't been on any debate stages and despite the fact that he's basically ignored the early states, has very strong national numbers. And while you or I, who maybe don't follow cable news and have a TV subscription, don't see his hundreds of millions of dollars of ads, enough voters are, and increasingly, people are moving to Michael Bloomberg, perhaps because they see him as stronger and more viable than Joe Biden if you want a neoliberal, quote unquote, pragmatic alternative to Donald Trump. And I think it's also important to note here that while Pete Buttigieg is indeed up a little bit, it's showing that his early state performances aren't necessarily translating into a strong national narrative. Pete Buttigieg may have quote unquote won Iowa, although I think the results are clearly flawed and Bernie Sanders won Iowa. And Pete Buttigieg may either finish first or second in New Hampshire. We'll see tomorrow. The reality is, is he's so weak among Latino voters. He's so weak among black voters that I don't necessarily see a path for Buttigieg to being viable nationally in this particular election, even with a couple strong results in the two earliest states, given that those states are so uniformly white and not representative of what's coming down later on in the primary process. Ultimately, then, this shows that it may well end up being Bernie Sanders versus Michael Bloomberg when all is said and done, that Bernie Sanders is quickly becoming the progressive candidate of choice. He's building the biggest coalition. He has a quarter of all Democratic voters supporting him, and no one else individually is even close. But there may be a movement to unite behind Michael Bloomberg especially when Joe Biden continues to show weakness and continues to show a severe decline in polling. And we shouldn't underestimate the fact that Michael Bloomberg has hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars to spend on this election and will mobilize that money to do whatever he can, however he can, 
to win that nomination or at least force a contested convention. But this is also a great opportunity for Bernie Sanders, because if there was anyone poised to take on a candidate like Bloomberg, it's the man who's made his entire campaign and most of his political career about fighting the outsized political and social and economic power of the billionaire class. And Bernie Sanders would basically be able to run against the example he set for generations about the dangers of billionaire influenced politics. It would be personified in the man he would be going toe to toe against. And I don't think that anybody else could maybe withstand the monetary barrage of Michael Bloomberg, not even Elizabeth Warren, who has also talked about, you know, the dangers of billionaire financed campaigns. Only Bernie Sanders is really poised to do that. I think it's very important then that Bernie Sanders really start to look at Michael Bloomberg. You don't want to assume everything at this stage. You don't want to count Joe Biden and Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg out entirely. You don't want to take your opponents for granted. Anything can happen. But this is showing that Michael Bloomberg may well be a credible national threat to win the nomination. Again, especially because Joe Biden is undeniably tanking. And it seems like a lot of Biden's support is moving to Bloomberg, at least according to the Quinnipiac poll. And it's also important to examine this poll for some of the key questions, because the perceptions of electability really matter. And this is where Biden is collapsing, at least from my perspective, because as I've noted on this channel, all Joe Biden really had was the perception and the belief that he was the one most likely to defeat Donald Trump. And in some cases that he was the only one that could defeat Donald Trump. And when and if he lost that perception, he lost that narrative, then he would start to collapse because there was nothing about passion or loyalty or belief in Biden's ideals there to underpin a narrative based on electability. And if you look at this poll, the movement in the question of defeating Donald Trump is absolutely massive. On this question, Biden still does technically lead over Bernie Sanders, 27 to 24. But Biden is down 17 points and Sanders is up five. Again, that is a 22 point swing from Biden to Bernie on the question of beating Donald Trump. And it also has to be remembered here that while no one is really close to Bernie or Biden on this issue, Michael Bloomberg is up eight points and he's clearly ahead of Warren and Buttigieg on this particular question as well. So this is showing again that Biden is in free fall in his overall top line numbers and on some of the crucial questions. And Bernie Sanders is up at least decently into first place or near first place on some of these questions, but it's Michael Bloomberg showing the most movement right now. But it should be stated that Quinnipiac also asked the question about hypothetical Trump versus Democrat matchups. And what it did show was that most of the Democratic candidates were actually doing quite well versus Trump. But specifically, Biden, Bloomberg and Sanders were all effectively jumbled up at the top. Now, that could be good news for all three candidates, demonstrating that any of them have a credible position to beat Donald Trump. But again, for Biden specifically, because electorability was all he had, I think that it's very dangerous for him to not be the only one seen as beating Donald Trump. As soon as Bernie Sanders can credibly make the same claim, he doesn't even have to be able to make a better claim, but just the same claim, then a lot of people who are pragmatists, for Biden, but idealists for Sanders are going to move from Biden to Sanders. So this is a fantastic poll for Bernie. It may be the single best poll for Bernie Sanders in the 2020 campaign thus far. There's been some great early state polls. There's been some good Super Tuesday polls. Bernie's had some good polls from Texas and California. I don't want to discount any of those. But to show Bernie Sanders with a massive eight point lead nationally is something we have not seen yet. And this is really showing that Bernie Sanders has maybe never had more national momentum than he has in this moment. And while it certainly does look like Joe Biden is in freefall 
and may not be Bernie Sanders' chief rival going forward in the primary process. And while it may look like Pete Buttigieg, despite some strong early results, doesn't have the national strength to make an impact, Michael Bloomberg may well end up being the key challenger to Bernie Sanders. And while Bloomberg's millions and millions and billions and billions of dollars cannot be understated, I am excited. I relish the opportunity to see Bernie Sanders defeat a billionaire in Michael Bloomberg to win the nomination and defeat another billionaire in Donald Trump to win the presidency.